Welcome to Minneapolis, Minnesota, home to the Minnesota Golden Gophers as we bring you second round action of the NCAA Volleyball Tournament inside the pav. It's the Big East champion Creighton Blue Jays and the Big Ten power Minnesota Golden Gophers. Taking a look at the Minnesota side of the bracket, both these teams relatively easy Friday nights as they swept through Minnesota taking care of Fairfield, Creighton knocking off Iowa State. The winner of this matchup will face Florida in the regional semifinals. And hello, everybody. I'm Dean Linky with former Michigan middle blocker Beth Karpiak. Beth, great to be with you. Great Big Ten season as always, but Creighton's pretty loose. They're feeling pretty good. Creighton likes not hosting. They like playing in these raucous, really adversarial buildings like the Pavilion, and they're really looking forward to a great match against Minnesota tonight. And they are led by the Big East Freshman of the Year, Keely Davis. What a great breakout season. Keely Davis had a great night last night, leading her team with 15 kills and she found a lot of success finding seams in that Iowa State block and really moving the ball around but she's gonna have some support behind her the libero really a gamer Brittany Witt she plays her best in the big matches and watch out tonight Dean because she is two away from a program digs record for Minnesota pick your poison they are loaded everywhere Right, all of their attackers really firing on all cylinders. Stephanie Samady, a six rotation player hitting from the back row. Taylor Morgan elevating in the middle. The M1 Reagan Pittman right off of one foot. Adonna Rollins, the sophomore, she has so many shots. And Alexis Hart, the senior outside hitter, killing it with some power. And here's who gives it to them. Kylie Miller getting settled back into the 5-1, really dishing it out evenly to her hitters. The transfer from UCLA, Minnesota, and Creighton. This is going to be a good one for a chance to move on in the NCAA tournament. Coming up next, right here on the Big Ten Network. Welcome back to the PAV NCAA second round volleyball action. Number seven, Minnesota and Creighton. Let's take a look at the starting lineups. First for Minnesota, Miller, Morgan, Hart, Rollins, Pittman, Samity, and the libero, CC McGraw. And the Creighton starting lineup you'll see on the Big Ten Network, Davis, Zimmerman, Welty, Cole, Bollinger, Hickman, and as we already told you, the great libero, two digs away from breaking the all-time record at Creighton. How about a little series history with Creighton and Minnesota? Minnesota undefeated. They won three out of four in the 2012 NCAA tournament. As you see, Creighton lost 3-1 at Nebraska as we are ready to go here at the PAV. Creighton comes in loose. And really, I think it's a reflection of their talented coach now in 17 seasons. Kirsten Berthal Booth said, hey, she's taking on this underdog role almost to new heights. As here we go, Creighton in blue, Minnesota in white, and Creighton with the opening point. Annika Welty, the right side, stepping in. Good start for Creighton, a nice, solid cross-court swing. Welty has become important because Erica Kostelak for her ACL, so in comes Welty. Is Creighton missing a big time player? And Minnesota comes back with the answer. We're tied at one. Take a look at Creighton here at the path. Three and two all time. As you commented earlier, they like going on the road. They do. We asked Coach Booth, what do you think about not hosting this year? And she said, we are relieved. Hosting is a lot of pressure. This team plays their best on away courts where they can really show their stuff. Service air on Minnesota, and Creighton will take it. There you see Kirsten Bernthal Booth. 17 amazing seasons, 371 and 170, 11 and 8 in NCAA action. We'll have more on her story, how she ended up at Creighton as we roll through this exciting second round matchup at the PAV. Point Minnesota, we're tied at two. CeCe McGraw serving. 
Minnesota 24 and 5, Creighton 25 and 5. Creighton has made the Big East look easy over the last several years. They have owned that conference. Big swing, but too deep. Of course, Minnesota led by former Olympic coach, coached the men and the women in the Olympics to great success. Nine all-time Sweet 16 bursts, fifth straight season with a top 10 seed. And the most important thing about that is the PAV gets to be rocking during NCAA action as that'll go back row off Minnesota Point Creighton. Jayla Zimmerman on the outside played most of the season on the right side, but due to injury, moving over the outside and taking on a big role for the Blue Jays. 3-3, back and forth. A lot of the experts, this one, they're not saying it's going to be a walk in the park for Minnesota. Creighton can play the dump at the net. Great play by Creighton. Madeline Cole, the setter, transfer from Marshall. I like the idea of Madeline being aggressive early on in the game. That's going to keep Minnesota's blockers honest. When she's front row, they're going to have to stay with her before moving out to block the pin hitters. Madeline Cole, the senior from Dallas, Texas. Two outstanding seasons at Creighton. And there's the block. Ready for it is Ballinger, the senior from Iowa. Ballinger does a nice job of tracking her hitters here. Watch her step right in front of Reagan Pittman. Even though Reagan is taking an unorthodox approach, great eye movement, tracking, and getting right in front of her. So Creighton on a run here, answered by Minnesota. Perfect touch there as Stephanie Samity. Let's go back to that movement on the block for Creighton. Ballinger, who's played just about every position, settling into the M1 spot. Nice job tracking her hitters. You see her take a step over to Miller, but then out of the periphery, she sees Reagan come in. Quick off the ground, hands over the net. Creighton has Minnesota scrambling, and once again, a two-point lead. As once again, good work from Madeline Cole. So Madeline Cole, clearly part of the scouting report. Set her with not one, but two dumps early here. The Blue Jays doing a nice job with their serve, getting Minnesota out of system. That's part of their game plan. They need first ball contacts to be really tough. 5-1 run right now for Creighton, and there's Pittman. As at six foot five, the first team all big tenor in system with the kill. That's right, Dean, getting in system here. She moves so quickly in transition, and she's best off of one foot, bringing so much power. Pittman joined on that first team by C.C. McGraw and Stephanie Samity, Alexis Hart, Taylor Morgan, second team, all Big Ten. Big swing from the redshirt freshman, Davis. Dug out back row by Samity. Finesse for the moment for Minnesota. Davis again. Good defense right now by Minnesota. Denied, though, at the net. Cole, the setter with the block. Talking with Coach Bernthal Bluth before the game, she said a lot of teams try to attack Cole because she is a smaller blocker. But that's often a mistake because she's a strong blocker. There you see the movement of her hands into the court. So when the ball ricochets off, it goes straight down. Minnesota not used to that. They had 10 blocks against Fairfield. Fairfield, zero blocks. Not, not even a not block e by chance. Not even a block error. <laughs> Point Minnesota. Another look at the block from Cole here. You see her up and then the last second pushing over. Blocking is such an active skill. It's not passive. It's not just taking up space. It's using your hands to get the ball into the court. 8-6 Creighton. Minnesota serving through Pittman. Pittman with a service ace. You're going to see Minnesota going after Davis when she's in the front row. They're going to want to serve her so that she has to pass before she can hit, hoping to get her out of her rhythm. Pittman had six aces against Rutgers this season. Got 
that great off-speed serve. And it's trouble. Pittman in form from the service line and at the net. And now we're tied. The early run from Creighton answered by Minnesota. Run it down for Davis. Slow down at the net. Good work by Minnesota. Pushed over. Cole, back pass. Good rally. And Minnesota, the hammer coming through right there. Point for Alexis Hart, a 4-0 run. Such a sharp, really difficult angle to hit there by Alexis, and she just grabs the hands of the Blue Jays. Nine kills by six different players. We told you it's going to be a good one. Tight already. Both teams with great runs. Minnesota by one. The Big Ten so strong in NCAA volleyball. Congratulations to Russ Rose and Penn State. They advance to the Sweet 16. You see Wisconsin sweeping UCLA. Game right here on the Big Ten Network. Sorry about your Michigan Wolverines falling to number nine, Kentucky. And Nebraska also playing right now as expect the Cornhuskers to keep rolling on like they always do. Creighton down one. Pittman serving. Dug out by the Blue Jays. Davis, nice finesse. Great job managing the double block there over. Little finesse, point Creighton. Smart shot there by Davis. She's not the biggest outside hitter. The Minnesota block is it's very physical, very big. So she's going to have to mix up her shots tonight. Just banging through that Minnesota block is not going to work. 9-9. Nine, nine, it's our fifth tie already. Big swing. And able to tool it, cranking it yet again. Lexus Hart. Alexis is one of the elite outside hitters in the Big Ten. She's so fundamentally strong, such a great arm swing, but she has the athleticism to back it up and really bring her to that next level as well. Beth, she hit 500 in that sweep over Fairfield with nine kills. There's Hart with the dig. Back row. Handled by Minnesota's back row. Kept alive by Cole. Slow down at the net by Minnesota. And point Minnesota Samity. And we had two middles back to back set up their, their hitters there. We have Taylor Morgan step in. I got this. I got this. Nice set over to Stephanie Samity, who takes a nice high swing off speed, finds some space on the court. Another service ace for Minnesota. That's their second. So two service aces. Just a nice float serve in seams. When you're serving, you want to hit it in between two players so that they have to move. And when you get your, your arms outside of your body, that's when you're, it's dangerous. The ball's going to fly back. Of course, no, Samantha Seliger-Swenson felt like she was there 20 years, right? <laughs> so they've kind of got a rent with Miller coming over from UCLA, but she missed 13 games because of a concussion. Minnesota was able to scramble, continue to get results, but it's been really nice to be back in that 5-1 as it'll go off of Minnesota. Point Creighton. Bailey McMiniman did a nice job stepping stepping in while Kylie was out. And then they did some things with a 6-2. But now Kylie really settling in to the 5-1, taking control of this offense. 12-10. Big swing again from Hart. Need good passes here. Miller. There's the athleticism hanging in the air. Miller will just pop it up. And great athleticism, as we mentioned off the top, so many weapons for Minnesota. And Stephanie hasn't gotten that many great sets. She's been off the net. Their timing isn't quite right, but she's making do, finding ways to get killed. Minnesota's first freshman to become an All-American three years ago, the junior 
back to back to back years, first team All Big Ten, and will once again be in the All American conversation. Well, her numbers are not as good as her freshman and sophomore year, but that's partly because so many weapons for Minnesota. Miller on a platter again, right down the middle, and with the finish is Taylor Morgan. Taylor Morgan is so difficult to block. She elevates so well in the middle that she's not running the typical quick tempo that most middles are. She jumps so high that it's a little bit slower tempo. Her arm comes through just as fast, but the tempo's a little slower, so it's very difficult for the block to pick up. White Minnesota. Boy, remember Creighton had that 4-1 run. Minnesota was able to absorb it, and now they're rolling. Great serving. There's the crank. Wonderful finish right there by Zimmerman, the sophomore from Lincoln, Nebraska. Starting to see Creighton move things around. Zimmerman typically on the outside, swinging at the pin, comes in to the middle for a nice high attack. 15-11, Creighton serving down for first set. We're at the pad, the home to the perennial power Minnesota Golden Gophers against Big East perennial power. Creighton, the Blue Jays, serving deep service air. Came on the air talking about Brittany Witt. She is now in the record books, the all-time career digs leader for the Blue Jays. When we were talking to Coach Bernthal Booth, I liked what she said that Brittany is special. It's, it's hard to recruit liberos. You know, when you're looking at hitters, you can see athleticism. You can see how high someone can jump and how hard they can hit. With liberos, it's hard to tell how this person's going to be when they get into the college level. But she sat down with her high school coach, and the high school coach said, Brittany is special. And she's a local gal and done so much for this Creighton Blue Jays team. Well, both these teams with a tremendous rally. Creighton would have been disappointed if they didn't win that. It started with an overpass, then a second overpass. Minnesota hung in there, but Creighton gets it. Creighton sticking in there. Nice back row attack. And the way, that's so successful for Keeley because she's showing hit. She's showing hit the whole time until the last second drops her shoulder for the roll shot. Excellent back row finish. Wow. Samity. It's impossible to stop that. Watch the legs and the arms. There's Stephanie in system. We haven't seen it quite yet tonight. Quick approach and their arm swing across her body, but she's facing one way, so it's really difficult for the defense to pick that up. She is always worth the price of admission. Just sure a is. superstar athlete. And another point for Minnesota. Samity in rhythm, Creighton could be in trouble. And watch Stephanie from the back row, too. She's going to hit from the back row behind the setter. Taylor Morgan, not great at going around on one foot. So they're going to run Stephanie a lot from the back row, too. And I'm sorry, Reagan Pittman in the front row can do one foot, but they're still going to be looking to Stephanie to hit out of that back right side position. Three service aces coming from three different Golden Gophers. 19 to 12, Minnesota. They are awake, they are ready. A seven point lead over Creighton. NCAA Volleyball on BT. Set was tied at nine. Minnesota on a 10-3 run. They lead it 19 to 12. Don't forget later tonight on BTN, when the Big Ten football title game is over, our crew is live from the field in Indianapolis. The final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance tonight at 11.30 Eastern on BTN. Let's go inside the attacking numbers. Break it down, Beth. So Minnesota's got 10 kills. Hart and Samity combining for seven of those. And a fairly efficient number hitting at 280 compared to Creighton only hitting at 103. Stephanie Samity, four kills. She's got a service ace. She's got four digs. She's got a block, a stat stuffer already here in the first set. And that's Samity with another dig, one-handed dig by Samity, doing it all. Cole for Davis. There's Samity keeping it alive. Pittman got set on the far side. Bouncing around, kept alive. Another hit there, big swing from Rollins. Rollins had a breakout performance last night, but Samity with a one-handed dig. Such a great reactionary play. First step towards the ball, and then the finish. She's the assist. She sets up Adonna Rollins for the nice line shot there. 
Yeah, this is Stephanie Samity at her finest. That freshman season breakout and a tremendous finish there by Davis. We talked about Keeley going up against a bigger, more physical block than she's used to seeing in the Big East, but they're really elevating, hitting the ball at a very high contact point and bringing it through with some power. Minnesota hitting almost 300. Rollins slowed down at the net. There Davis sets up, but out of bounds. Point Minnesota. Davis normally will finish that one, was going down the line. Kill Kelly comes out. Now Rollins, the sophomore from Texas, really was a high flyer. Led the team in kills last night. 14 kills on the night in that nice quick set match against Fairfield. Samity doing everything. Davis, there's Samity ready for it. Leaning into it, dug out by Brittany Witt, the all-time dig leader, then handled by Hart at the net. Point Minnesota, they're three away from taking set one. Brittany Witt doing a nice job in the backcourt, keeping her team alive. But Minnesota just not giving up at the net. Alexis Hart with the nice little finesse shot to put it away in the corner. We were tied at nine at one point. It's been all Minnesota since then. Cole for Davis setting up. Pittman in combination with Miller. Pittman again, a brick wall in the middle for Minnesota. There's Pittman gets a hand on it just to keep it alive. The movement of both teams, phenomenal. Pittman, the machine in the middle for Minnesota. Minnesota playing some scrappy defense behind their block here, lining up. Great dig, CC McGraw. Reagan Pittman stepping in to keep the ball alive. And then they're able to finish with a nice point. Minnesota from the service line is now one point away as they have been a service ace machine and serving for set number one is Adana Rollins, the sophomore from Texas, 24-13. Davis has a chance. There's Pittman with Miller again. Davis another chance. Slowed down by Miller. Miller will set for Pittman. Picked up by Cole. Nice work by Cole to slide over. Big swing, and Minnesota takes set number one, 25-13. Minnesota doing a nice job on the defense side, really keeping the ball in the air, not letting go, but also forcing Creighton to their outside. Creighton's strength lies in their balance. They forced it a lot to Keeley Davis with 17 attempts. Hugh McCutcheon's team on a 13-3 run to take set one. Minnesota one, Creighton zero. Big Ten Network. Minnesota closing out set one with a 13-3 run. They win set one, 25-13, led by their stat stuffer, Stephanie Samity. Starting from the service line with an ace, that tough float serve that drops right in front of the play, uh, Creighton server receive. Getting it done on defense, and then, of course, her bread and butter attacking from the right side. Here she's two-thirds of the play, passing and hitting and then this great cross-court shot, almost impossible to defend. Talking about stats, here they are. She had four kills versus Fairfield, kind of took it easy. She had four in the first set tonight. And I want to point out that assist, getting it done everywhere. Minnesota hitting 281, four aces, four different players with an ace and doing a nice job behind those th that great serving and those aces of really putting up a great block and keeping Creighton's offense to a very low .023. So here we go, second set underway. See how Creighton responds. Overpass, we're right at the net anyway, and because of that, they'll say infraction on Creighton Point, Minnesota. Looks like Madeline Cole couldn't quite get her feet there, and she was in the net. So Miller. Miller with eight assists already. She's got one of those four service aces. She has a nice serve, sharp over the tape. 
Popped in the air for Hart. And point Creighton. Annika Welty on the right side, and she's really just getting started for this Creighton team. Injured most of the year, had a stress fracture four weeks into the season, but is back into the swing of things. And really what's helped is that Madeline Cole, her, her senior setter, trusts her, and she's willing to get her the ball. Welty coming off a career high, nine kills last night against Iowa State. As the Blue Jays swept Iowa State. Lock for Minnesota, Taylor Morgan, redshirt senior from Blaine, Minnesota. Three blocks for the Golden Gophers, two for Creighton. Rachel Kill Kelly, the freshman from the state of Minnesota. Service air, that's two service airs for the Golden Gophers. It's always tough on the coaches when you bring your specialist in to serve and boom, you pop it right into the net. It's one of the hardest positions in college volleyball coming off the bench to serve. Rollins from the serve. Look at this and then look at Rollins. We talk about Samney throwing her legs. Watch Rollins get up. Textbook in system play the tempo of this outside ball so fast. Rollins elevating. And again, she has so many shots. She can place the ball wherever she wants on the court with power. 14 kills last night. Creighton does tie it, but from all over the place, with Rollins really heating up in NCAA tournament action, this Minnesota Golden Gopher team is dangerous. The best volleyball players, Dean, play their highest at their highest point at the end of the season. Service air for Creighton. That's their second. They have yet to get a service ace. As Creighton right now, all zeros as it relates to their hit percentage. Stephanie Samity, four kills on nine attacks. She's already got double digit digs. She almost had her second service ace kept alive. And Rollins couldn't get the full crank that time as the ball was a little bit behind her. Great save by Creighton to stay in this one. Cole working really hard, but then a free ball. Minnesota wishes they had this one back. The free ball, Adana Rollins just can't put away. Cole and Grace Nelson with the save for the Blue Jays. Remember that point, because if Creighton can hang in in their second set, that was a huge point, as you said, off the three opportunity, still able to get the point. And there's an attack here. It'll go back to Minnesota. Minnesota's block setting up cross court against Davis, forcing her to go line, and she's missed that shot a couple times now. Keely Davis making the decision with Kirsten Bernthal Booth last year to redshirt because they had two first team all Big E superstars graduate. Point Minnesota. Coach Booth did say that she would have been ready last year, but she wouldn't have played as much. So now she's got this year and three more years remaining. And had a great season as Big East Freshman of the Year. There she is, Kirsten Bernthal Booth. High praise for her athletic director, Bruce Rasmussen, but it was former Nebraska superstar volleyball coach, Terry Pettit, that was the man responsible for her getting the job. We're taking a look here, challenging if the ball was touched by the Minnesota block. A good angle here, looking for fingers pushed back or maybe the ball's direction changing. I don't see anything here conclusive that there was a touch. The blanket lady at Minnesota. Let's take one more look here. Beth, what do you think? Again, we're looking for the touch, possibly on Alexis Hart off the block. Nice high swing. She's pushing over very nice. But I don't see any fingers push back or the ball's trajectory changing, and that's usually what I look for on these challenges when we're looking for a touch. I think the call's going to stand. So 
One of the challenges used, the call will stand. It really was enjoyable to spend time, though, with Kirsten Bernthal Booth. She was a lot of fun, and she has a lot of great things to say about this team. She really likes where they are and likes how they play together. Well, and the university. She is at home. I think her words were, she's buying what she's selling. It makes <laughs> it really easy. <laughs> Great finish by Hart. He's got five kills. So Creighton, couple comebacks when they lose their first set as they've got two wins against ranked teams as well, beat USC and Marquette. Cole pushes it all the way across, and this time Samity can't handle it. Davis almost trapped there, a very tight set, but she finds that seam in the block. That's when Minnesota's blockers aren't able to quite close. There's a small hole, and she pushes it through with a very fast arm swing. So Creighton serving down two here in the second set and down one set. Another save by Samity, pushed too deep that time by Hart, who leads the Gophers with five kills. That one pushed too deep. Brittany Witt, the senior from Omaha, Marion High School. She actually broke the record of a fellow Marion High School superstar as they keep it in the family at Creighton. Phenomenal university. Samity, Miller, Pittman denied. Davis with Hickman. Hickman, the junior from Lawrence, Kansas. Davis did a nice job earlier in the play getting up a dig, and then great swing blocking where the timing is perfect. Arms over the net, back into the court, right as Reagan is swinging cross. So Davis, four kills and a block. We're tied at seven. Hart, remember that dig right there from Creighton. Free opportunity, Minnesota sets up their offense. Hart again, once again dug out. Creighton denying Hart not once but twice, pushed over, kept alive. By McGraw, third time for Hart, and this time an infraction on Creighton. Some nice defense by Brittany Witt in the backcourt, reading around her block. Alexis Hart, one of the best at taking a ball from behind her body, but Brittany is there, settled in. Great dig. Six digs for the all-time dig leader at Creighton. Witt, team down one, able to tool it there. Davis, she's the complete package here, very smart. Very smart play. She's got a big block in front of her, five kills on the night. What's she going to do? Tool it off the block. You see her push it in to Kylie Miller and away. In and away, gets the ball out. Kirsten Bernthal Booth talking about the cognitive part of the game, and she said all of her players really have a high volleyball IQ. I like that adjective for a team. You don't hear it very often, but I like when she called her team cognitive. I think that's going to help them in this match against a team that's much more physical than they are. Samity with another back row dig. And another infraction on Creighton. Stephanie Samity. Look, we always, always love her flying all over the place, but she's doing everything tonight. She sure is. I'm really impressed with her defense tonight. 13 digs already. She's a double-double machine with 10 double-doubles. It's only fitting. She's double-digit double-doubles. Stephanie Samity as we're tied at nine. Remember, we were tied at nine in that first set too, though, Beth. And Minnesota really pulled away, started getting some tough serving. Hart. And Hart cross court, second team all Big Ten. Hart, as you see Samity, Pittman, and McGraw, first team all Big Ten. Samity, the stat stuffer with those 10 double-doubles. Reagan Pittman, she's their M1. She does a great job off of one foot, but also a blocking powerhouse, 1.43 blocks per set. 
Creighton's first lead since 8-7 in the first set, and they increase the lead. They're up to 11-9. I talked about how difficult it is to block Taylor Morgan because she runs like a one and a half tempo ball. Hickman doing a nice job of being patient there, waiting, and then pushing your hands across the net fast. Ninth NCAA appearance for Creighton. We've got a whistle. Beat the net and 4-0 scoring run for Creighton. So Hugh McCutcheon wants to talk it over. Creighton 12-9 here in the second set. Tremendous response from the Big East champion Creighton. They lose that first set 25-13, but they now lead the second set 18-14, led by the Big East Freshman of the Year. Minnesota, they were so good in that first set, but Creighton has evened it out, affecting the Golden Gopher hit percentage. And I think a lot of that has to do with Creighton's defense. Usually, you get a team down in their hit percentage by serving really tough. Creighton's struggling a little bit from the service line, three service errors, so I think the key for them here is their defense, led by the senior libero, Brittany Witt. Minnesota had just three errors in the first set. They've got seven already in the second set. They also had four aces in the first set. They've got none in the second set, and they trail by four here in the second set. Remember, a sweet 16 spot on the line. Florida already looking on to see who they'll face. Service air for Creighton. They have four service airs. Minnesota with four service airs. Miller now serving as the Golden Gophers will try to go on a run here. And there's a service ace. That is five service aces. Miller has two. Miller going to go after Keeley Davis here. She's in the front row, but she's also passing. So they're looking to get her out of the attack by forcing her to pass. Great eyes from Beth Karpiak. So glad you're with us here on the Big Ten Network. Down the middle again, and Hickman, the junior, making her presence felt here for the Blue Jays. Nice to see Cole push it into Hickman, even when she's off the net. Sometimes setters are uncomfortable setting a quick middle attack like that so far off the net. Nice timing between the two. Hickman, five kills on Friday. And another point here for Creighton. They're five away from tying this up at one set apiece. Hickman did some scouting on Taylor Morgan last night. So good at catching the rhythm of her hit, waiting and then pushing over strong with high hands. Four blocks for Hickman. There's contact to McGraw and then the big swing. How do you stop number 19, Alexis Hart? She, again, is just one of those elite outside hitters. Fundamentals are there, and then she elevates it with so much athleticism. She just comes through with so much power. If you give her a one-on-one -on one -on -one situation there against the block, she's going to find the court. Seven kills for Hart. Kill Kelly. Overpass. Hammered home by Zimmerman. Nice textbook reaction volleyball play there by Zimmerman. Quick, compact arm swing, puts the ball down. Beth, as a middle blocker at Michigan, those overpasses, tell me about your eyes and your heart rate at the same time. They're really, really exciting. <laughs> but when you don't get them, it's really disappointing. Those are those gimme shots that you want to get every time and can be huge momentum swings. 21-17. Rollins. Five kills for Rollins. Coming off that team high 14 kill performance last night. McGraw serving down three here in the second set. Cole back pass. Slow down at the net. Pittman calling out, or is it? They leave it for the big swing of Rollins. Rollins now with six kills. I saw 
sophomore with such great tempo here. Fast ball to the outside. Two big blockers in front of her and she finds a way around them. Another look here. Just hitting over the block, not much you can do. Key part of that is with so many weapons, as we've said earlier, the cliche, pick your poison. Good work by Pittman to be deceptive. You don't know where you're going, although it seems like it's been the same spot the entire night for Minnesota. But when Minnesota's attackers are so effective and you know what they can do, the block and the defense has to stay disciplined. Take a look around some of the other brackets. You see Wisconsin have already punched their ticket. They swept UCLA, so they'll face Texas A&M in the Sweet 16. Nebraska 32-30 in that third set to take a 2-1 lead over Missouri. Nebraska not letting go, wanting to fight to get into that regional semifinal. Congratulations to Kelly Sheffield, Big Ten champs moving on. They have so many weapons as well. They're not just all Big Teners. Those are all Americans. Same thing here for Coach McCutcheon. That Wisconsin team is hot. Sydney Hilly, Dana Retke, great connection in the middle there. Rollins, six kills. Davis, six kills. Rollins, a little better hitting percentage. Rollins just has so many shots, and we're seeing her elevate so high, hitting above and around Creighton's block. It's very difficult for the defense to, to set themselves around the block when you have a hitter that can hit over it. Five of those six kills coming in the second set for Rollins. It was touch, point Creighton, tip. They're three away from tying this at one. Zimmerman now with four kills on 19 attacks. Still below the equator as part of our hit percentage, but we see Creighton three and five this season after losing that first set. McGraw first contact, Miller, Rollins. Wit and at the net again. Another dump there by Cole. Cole now with four kills as the setter. I like an aggressive setter, and that was an aggressive setter attack. Not just throwing it over, but really pushing it over with some strength. Minnesota's block is there, but they just can't stop it. Samity. Kept alive by Cole. Dug out by Miller. Pittman. They'll say... Double hit, right? So point for Coach Booth. And there's the focus. What a story. 17 seasons, nine NCAAs. Chasing down, smiling Bob Warming, who had 11 NCAA visits as the soccer coach formerly of Creighton. Now at Omaha, so he's back in the area. And there it is. The Blue Jays have tied it. The Big East champs ready to go, and we're tied at one. Jayla Zimmerman, six rotation player, so mentally tough. This team trusts her, and she takes a big swing for game point. What a response. Minnesota, that first set reminding you it was 9-9, and Minnesota went on a roll. They won that first set 25-13. Creighton responds. It was 9-9 again in the second set. They take set two, 25-19 through two sets. We're tied at one. Great atmosphere. Great environment. It's 1-1 one, one through two here in Minneapolis. Blue Jays volleyball faithful having a good time during the air guitar portion of the PAF festivities. And Creighton having a good time in that second set. They take it 25 to 19, and we're tied at one. Creighton getting it done through Madeline Cole, the setter for the Blue Jays. She's been a fairly offensive setter throughout the season, but coming in with under one kill per set, she's already got four on the night. I like it. She's keeping Minnesota's block and their defense honest and getting some great points for her team. Madeline Cole, a transfer from Marshall. What stands out as you break down the stats through two sets, Beth? What stands out is that this is a defensive battle. Both teams hitting pretty low percentages, but really great defense and some great blocking to back it up. 
Yeah, five blocks for Creighton. Remember Fairfield with no blocks on a Friday night. Monday on BTN, we got more early season men's conference basketball. The Gophers battle the Hawkeyes at 8 Eastern. That's Monday night on BTN and the Fox Sports app. The Pav was rocking through that first set as we're joined by their head coach, Hugh McCutcheon. And Hugh, through two sets, what was the message to your team? Well, we just got to get back in control of ourselves. Uh, you know, a nice first set and... Uh, you know, uncharacteristic gear prone and set too. So really just trying to get back to playing some good volleyball and seeing what happens. But, uh, you know, Creighton's a good team and they're playing well. So uh, so it's on. Yeah, it'll be a good battle here. Coach, this has been a pretty defensive battle. What does this team need to do to pick up the offensive numbers? Well, it feels like we're trying to bury it a lot. I think we got to just be smart and be patient. You know, of course, if you get your set, you got to take your shot. But feels like we're going for style points more than we are going for real points at times. So we just got to hit a good shot in the court often and see if that's good enough to get it done. Always a pleasure, Coach. Thanks for being with us. Yep, cheers. Take a look at our bracket here. Minnesota Golden Gophers, Creighton Blue Jays. And check out the bottom half, Texas and Louisville. How about that? Already in the Sweet 16, Florida awaiting the winner of this one. And Louisville taking off Western Kentucky, number 15, the first seeded team to lose in this tournament. Louisville from the ACC. Texas looking like a team that could win it all. And the Blue Jays, 25 and one, when winning at least one of the first two sets. As we said earlier, they have owned the Big East. They have really breezing through the Big East 17-1 in conference, but they have seen some Big Ten play, taking Nebraska, and they took a set from them early on in the season. In other news, Cincinnati spoiling the thought of Pittsburgh perhaps being at home. Remember Minnesota last year, we thought that was going to be the story. They didn't make it. Pittsburgh had this great season. They are out. That's getting back to Coach Bernthal Blue Booth's statement about hosting being a lot of pressure. This Creighton team likes being on the road, playing free. The last five seasons, Creighton's host has not advanced to the Sweet 16. As you said, off the top, that includes two of Creighton's as well. You said it off the top. Creighton likes to take their show on the road. Fans having a good time. Air guitar and everything is with the third set underway here. Dean Linky, Beth Karpiak. The pad, Minneapolis, home to the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Always amongst the best crowds in the nation. And Creighton picking right up where they left off in that second set. They got a one nothing lead. Number 10, Florida. Waiting the winner of this one, Miller. Leaning into a dugout back row by the Blue Jays. And with every single point, the Blue Jays believe they can get it done. Picked off there by Krause. Kenneth Krause, a freshman from Wisconsin. And another point for Blue Jays. The tide has definitely turned. Blue Jays looking strong. CC McGraw getting Alexis Hart too close to the net. She can't put it through. Megan Ballinger there for the Blue Jays, holding the net strong. A scramble, and right now, Brayton looking smooth. Hugh McCutcheon trying to figure it out for the Golden Gophers. As he said, that first set, they were flying. The movement was great. Miller. Samity just gives an easy one back to the Blue Jays. Big swing, deflected, point for Zimmerman. Four nothing, Creighton on top. A rare miscommunication there. Take a look. Hugh McCutcheon not liking what he sees from his team. He's going to make some changes. So, Miyabi coming in for Stephanie Samity on the right side. So Ayuri, the junior from Japan, transferred from Southern Idaho, and immediately makes an impact. 
That was an 8-0 run, including the second set ended right there. So difficult to come off the bench cold. She does a nice job looking very fresh with a very fast, strong arm swing. Great job by our BTN crew to actually see you say, get my, my OB, and she comes on, immediately makes an impact. Another dump, read that time by Miller, handling the coal, but into the net, it'll be a point for Creighton. Samity started off hot. Then some struggles into the second and third set. Some miscommunications with her teammate. Miyabi bringing that spark back. Zimmerman serving with a 5-1 lead. Rollins handled there by Nelson at the net. Morgan was there with Miyabi, dug out. Dumped by Morgan. Kept alive by Creighton. Back row dig, Gophers. Rollins. Cole back pass. Minnesota read that all the way. CeCe McGraw was ready. Cole with the cleanup. And flush at the net. Minnesota, what a block. How about the defensive effort from both of these teams? Cole all out. And then Minnesota, again, Miyabi bringing that spark in. Nice push back into the court from the right side pin. Miyabi did not feature last night. We were wondering if we were going to see her. We actually saw you call for her, and she's come on. A kill and a block, and able to tool it. Davis with another point for the Blue Jays. Miyabe. What an impact off the bench. Fun to see Kylie Miller trusting Miyabe so much, going to her consistently right off the bench. Miyabe serving after the kill. Cole again with that back pass. Hickman. Pittman with the wind up. Let Pittman get rolling. The first team all big tenor will put it right through you. A nice look here. Look at Reagan's going from coast to coast, working so hard in transition. She's so fast, and she does a nice job of getting up in the air, finding that line shot. Third kill for Pittman. 6-4, third set, Davis. Right through Miyabe, the kill. Davis with eight kills to lead all players. Seven four. Lined up from Rollins. Slow down at the net. Back row dig. Rollins swing first time, second time, finish. Witt does a nice job lining up against Rollins, but she gets that second shot and doesn't even give them a chance. Nice Minnesota digs keep, keeps them in it. Rollins focused on the overpass. Rollins serving after the kill. Cole goes far side to Davis. Scramble here. Free look for the Blue Jays. Watch the Blue Jays set their offense. Through Cole with the dump. Ready, Minnesota. Cole's got those four kills. And Davis now, nine kills. She's got 10 digs. One kill away from a double-double for the Big East. Freshman of the year. And a nice setup there by Brittany Witt. She back bump sets it over to Davis, who takes a really aggressive swing on an out-of-system ball. Eight-five, Davis serving. Point for Hart. Hugh McCutcheon going to his bench and it's working out. 
Miyabe coming off the bench and making an impact immediately. Swinging from the outside one on one and then lining up nicely for the block, pushing back into the court. And then here on the right side, just painting that line, getting a touch from Creighton. Sometimes you need to change things up, look for a spark off the bench. But Creighton still with a two point lead. Now it's three again. Blue Jays in system. Their offense looking good here in the third set. Annika Welty, she hits really high and she sees the block very well. So even if Minnesota's block is in front of her, she can see it and hit around. Welty coming off a nine kill performance, has three kills in this one. Creighton leading by three. Good hustle by Witt. Dug out by McGraw. Miller back pass. An attack air against Minnesota Point Creighton. And we talked about how nice it was to see Miller go to Miyabe and be that spark off the bench, but there you saw them go to her about three times in the same play. You can't rely on that one person to carry the whole team. They need to spread the ball out. Hart. Talk about spreading it out. You want to try to find Hart, but a great dig by Creighton. The Blue Jays. And there's Hart. Gets a second look at it. Throwing it down. Creighton knows it's, knows it's going to Hart. They've got the big double block up against her. One swing. Nice free ball that Miyabe takes care of. So fast. Ballinger isn't able to close the block for Creighton. She hits it right through. Witt had that initial dig, but not the second one. But Creighton comes right back, taking advantage of a service error. Minnesota now with five service errors to balance their five aces. Creighton, four service errors, just one ace. But they serve here in the third set up four. And we're tied at once. Other side is Hart. Doesn't matter where she is, Hart with a finish. 10 kills for Alexis on the night. Showing some versatility, getting it done on the right side pin as well as the left side pin. So Hart's 10 kills. She's the first player with double digit kills. Meanwhile, Davis is one kill away from a double double for Creighton. Cole. Denied at the net by Minnesota. Morgan wearing 12. Morgan, Niobe together. Twelve eight. Rollins. Point Minnesota. Minnesota doing a nice job here. Taking an out of system ball. And Adonna Rollins, we talk about her having so many shots. In that shot toolbox includes tooling the block. She's a great, she does a great job using hands to her advantage. You look at the hit percentage, as you said, a defensive battle right now. Pittman pops it in the air. It was played behind Miyabe. And because of that, Creighton will get the point. Pittman typically does a nice job taking that second ball. She had some experience playing setter uh, when, they, when Minnesota was running the 6-2 earlier this year, but just misses that one. There she is again with another assist. Big swing from Davis. And there is that double-double. 10 kills, 10 digs, a block, and assists. The Big East Freshman of the Year bringing the heat as Creighton, they take the second set, they lead the third set. It is the Keeley Davis Show with the double-double. Outside the path, the University of Minnesota College of Science and Engineering. They've got four dazzling light shows designed by science and engineering students. The high-tech light show features more than 250,000 LED lights. Speaking of light show, how about the Big East Freshman of the Year turning it on? 
Keely Davis with 10 kills on the night so far. And Dean, earlier tonight we talked about how against Iowa State, she found a lot of success hitting it through the seam in their block. And tonight against a bigger, more physical Minnesota block that she was going to have to do something different. And she has. She's finding different shots across the court, across the court, off speed, and also hitting very sharp angles. Keep talking about Kirsten Bernthal Booth saying no pressure by going on the road. You don't have to worry about necessary family and friends. And you've got this red shirt freshman Davis, her second career, double double, big lights, big stage. She is ready. And we talked with Coach Booth about their scouting practices for the NCAA tournament as opposed to regular season play. And Minnesota wasn't really even on their radar during practice this past week. They were so focused on Iowa State that they were going to start really looking into Minnesota tonight. And it looks like this very cognitive team did their homework. 16 to 9, Beth Karpiak. Creighton on top. The crank there from Rollins. Rollins now with nine kills to go with five digs. Stephanie Sanders Amity going to come back in the game. Nice work there by I.D. Miyabe off the bench. We'll see what Stephanie Samity can bring after that break. Cole tries the dump. Minnesota ready for it. She has gone three in a row unsuccessful after being almost perfect to begin the game. Cole came out strong with four kills. Reagan Pittman says that's enough. Picked up on it, <laughs> and she's going to stick with her hitter when she's in the front row. Samity serving for Minnesota down five here in the third set. We're tied at ones. Davis with the big swing, but out of bounds. This is a good timeout right here. Kirsten Bernthal Booth feeling the momentum swing calls timeout tied at ones. Penn State, Wisconsin, Purdue already in the Sweet 16. You see Nebraska. You can check them out at BTN Plus. Coach Cook as Nebraska just two points away from giving the Big Ten their fourth team in the Sweet 16 back. Looking to close this out and keep dancing. Warren Stiffrens, the powerhouse All-American the big kill. Leading Missouri two sets to one. Bring you some bonus coverage on the Big Ten Network. See if the Cornhuskers can finish it out. Take care of Missouri. Three sets to one. Stephanie Samity was pulled to the bench by Hugh McCutcheon. Back out there. The match tied at one between Creighton and Minnesota. Double the fun on BTN. Creighton with the point, and Missouri staying alive. Davis on your left for the Blue Jays. Nebraska waiting for the serve from Missouri. One point away from advancing yet again to the Sweet 16, a yearly ritual. Missouri's making it tough, though. And Creighton's making a tough on Minnesota. 18 to 12. Wow, Dean, calling two matches at the same <laughs> time. That, that's some serious skill. Hugh McCutcheon wants to talk it over. And there we see Nebraska advancing to the Sweet 16, joining Penn State, Wisconsin, and Purdue. Three sets to one over Missouri. It's all business in Lincoln. Four Big Ten teams looking to keep dancing. Nebraska coming into this tournament, ranked number five. Looking forward to moving on. The Big Ten always NCAA tournament. Tough, right? There is not a Final Four in recent years that doesn't feature a couple teams from the Big Ten. Six teams in the Sweet 16 the past three years. What an impressive stat. I think even more impressive, take a look at the Final Four. Two teams in the Final Four for the past three years from the Big Ten. That's some pretty good representation. It's not bad The six in the Sweet 16 is there's four now. And Minnesota, though, they've got some work to do if they're going to make it five. What a response from Creighton. 
Stephanie Samity, she had such a great first set, started to struggle. Hugh McCutcheon pulled her. She's back out there, but it takes more than just Stephanie Samity if you're going to beat this talented Creighton team. As you see, Minnesota, they've been featured in those Final Fours, 2015 and 16. They know how to do it. they got to get going, though, Beth. This Minnesota team, they do know how to win, but you're right, Dean. They have to get going. We talked about Stephanie Samity early on in this match as a stat stuffer, really bringing it from all ends defensively um, as well as from the net. Pulling her, let's see if she can recoup. They got some help from Miyabe. Hopefully she can gather herself and start putting it back together for this team. Cole serving for Creighton. Up 18 to 12 in the third set. Pittman denied at the net. Davis was there in rhythm. See Hickman cheating towards Reagan Pittman. Nice job closing the block hip to hip with Keeley Davis closing the block down. Yeah, good call by giving Hickman credit as well, Beth. Well done. Rollins, big swing. Hickman thought she hit it twice. No. First contact and then nice response. Hickman has been effective here for the Blue Jays. She's got three kills. It's the third 4-0 run this set for Creighton. Cole serving. Pittman again denied. Davis sets her feet. Davis, 13 kills, 10 digs. Davis doing so much for this Creighton team. Cole getting her a nice look out of system. She's backpedaling, still gets the ball in a place where she could keep it in front of her and take a strong swing, swing and see the block to make a good decision. 21 to 12. Point Minnesota. Hugh McCutcheon, what a job. Kirsten Bernthal Booth has done handling Hugh McCutcheon's Minnesota Golden Gophers. First set was all Minnesota, second set all Creighton, and Creighton four points away from taking a 2-1 lead, make it three points away. Not the best in-system play there from Creighton. It didn't look like Hickman was, was up in the air, ready to take an aggressive swing, but still finding ways to get points. This Minnesota defense really on their heels. 22 to 13, the Blue Jays. With a service ace, everything going right for Creighton. And they're two points away from taking a 2-1 lead over the Golden Gophers. Davis serving right at the net. Good idea by Hickman. Remember that dig from Pittman, though. Back pass. Kept alive by McGraw. Big swing. Power from Hart. Pittman was huge right there, keeping Minnesota alive. Might be a little too late here in this set, but let's see what she can do from the service line. So Pittman with one of the five service aces. Twenty-three, fourteen. Block. Morgan together with Hart. The Tula though, and now Creighton sitting here to take a two-one lead. Set point for the Blue Jays. The all-time digs leader, Brittany Witt, setting the record tonight here at Minnesota. And there's Witt with the dig. Offense rolling. Big swing by Hart. Another dig from Witt. Too deep. They'll say, yeah, point Minnesota. You can see right there Zimmerman was calling for a touch, but nobody touched it. Point Golden Gophers. 
I like that swing from Zimmerman. This team trusts each other. They're not afraid to take big swings on big plays. Second set point for Creighton. They'll give Minnesota a free look here. And even with a free look, Creighton takes the third set. The Big East champions ready for the moment. After losing the first set, they now have a 2-1 lead. The Creighton Blue Jays ready for the moment. Their head coach, Kirsten Berthaw Booth, using the role of the underdog. Creighton delivering with a 2-1 lead through three. Make no mistake, the Creighton Blue Jays are looking to keep dancing in the NCAA tournament and send some shockwaves by knocking off the number seven seed, Minnesota. What a response. There's been some other great notable matches. Pittsburgh, the host of the NCAA championships. They're out, Cincinnati getting it done. You see Purdue knocking off Marquette and Wisconsin with the sweep of the Bruins. Purdue happy to get that hosting bid. Talking with coach Dave Shondell before the NCAA tournament selection. They were on the bubble, really happy to get that home setting. They're a team that likes to feel comfortable where they are and, and their success at home has been really great. Talk about forgetting about the first set. That's exactly what Creighton did. Look what they've done since. Un unreal, Dean. Only nine kills in the first set since then, 26 hitting. 0 0.023 in the first set, now hitting 222, really coming on strong and taking Minnesota by, by surprise. The Minnesota really looks like they're on their heels. Saw that footnote there, 24 and 0 right as the young fans try to get into it, seeing if Minnesota will respond. They have to, it's do or die now for the Golden Gophers on their home court. The winner will advance to the Sweet 16. The last time that Minnesota lost the first two sets was against Nebraska on November 22nd. They lost that match in five sets. Hart with the point for Minnesota. Hart had two chances on that play. The first one, she's one on one, but can't put it down. Gets a second chance and does a nice off-speed shot. So Hart with 12 kills. Davis on the other side for the Blue Jays. Leads all players with 13. Pittman serving. Cole pops it high in the air on a platter to Davis. Davis, you can just, right now it looks like just send it anywhere and she's gonna find it. She's doing a great job adjusting to the ball really getting her feet there, taking strong, aggressive swings whenever she can. 14 kills, hitting 225. Davis does have one service ace. Miller keeps it alive. Dug out by Witt. That's a lot of power from Hart. This time she goes finesse, handled at the net. Cleaned up by Miller, but on a platter. The big eyes there of Zimmerman. Starts with a great dig from Witt. And when we talked to Coach Hugh McCutcheon, he said that we need to find the court when we have our opportunities. It's hard to find the floor when you've got Brittany Witt back there digging up everything. And then Jayla Zimmerman putting away with the nice overpass. 16 digs for Witt. Blocked by Minnesota, kept alive by the Blue Jays. Zimmerman able to tool it. Point. Blue Jays, 3-1 here in the fourth set. Smart shot from Zimmerman. When we talked to Coach Bernthal Booth, she said she knew that Jayla was going to be her sixth rotation player coming into the spring, and she told her, you need to be two things. You need to be on the best shape in the team, on the, the best shape of anyone on the team, and you need to be the most mentally tough, and she's been able to do that tonight. Hugh McCutcheon trying to figure it out here. Such a great start, 25 to 13 after that first set was tied at nine. Second set was tied at nine and Creighton won at 25-19. They won the third set 25-15. And once again, tooling it is number seven Zimmerman, the sophomore from Lincoln. 
Taylor Morgan showing some frustration late on the block. They're not pushing over early enough. Hart handled there by Zimmerman. He's just two digs away from a double-double. Out of bounds. You see Morgan. Let's revisit the series history as Coach Bernthal Booth trying to give Creighton their first ever win against Minnesota. Minnesota really dominant in, in the history between these two teams. But this Creighton team, they're exactly where they want to be. They didn't scout Minnesota much coming into this week. They did their homework last night, and they're playing very loose, very free. They look very comfortable in the pass. Back-to-back points, though, for Minnesota. Might have a challenge here. Kirsten Bernthal Booth, 17 seasons, 371 victories. This after doing a great job at Kirkwood Community College in Iowa. She played at Truman State in Missouri. She's also a pretty good tennis player. Ooh. First look looks like that might be in here, Beth. So we're looking to see if any part of the ball hits any part of the line. Then that ball is in from this angle. Pretty close. Another good angle here. From that one, not as clear. Looks like the ball might have landed out. Well, that, that was the call, so I think it's going to stand, Beth. I'm with you on that one, Dean. Second challenge. Looks like the call is going to stand. Coach Bernthal Booth getting an explanation. The jacket was off earlier. Now it's back on. And Beth, we had an interesting discussion as we talked to her this morning. She kind of was keeping that theme going of, yeah, Minnesota's superpower. We know that it's going to take. And I think she was just using that as part of what she was telling her team as well and just keeping that going with you and I on the call. Yeah, I don't want to say that she wasn't confident in her, in her team. She had a lot of really great things to say about this Creighton team, but she also had a lot of really great things to say about this Minnesota team and how much more physical they were and how great Creighton was going to have to play to hang with them. And I think, like you said, Dean, it's all part of the strategy of keeping loose, coming in to an adversarial situation and, and really playing that underdog aggressive volleyball. Great rally. Rollins. Davis. Cole. Back pass and they'll say double point Creighton. Another look here. We've got a Donna Rollins there grabbing the net on the way down from her block. Great job by our BTN crew as we're tied at five here in the fourth set with the Blue Jays leading two sets to one over the seven seed Minnesota Golden Gophers. Tapped over by Rollins. That allow Cole to set Zimmerman. Rollins with a quick pickup. Samity comes out of that with a big swing handled by Creighton. Too far across from Zimmerman point Minnesota. Defensive rallies from both teams, really taking aggressive swings and defense stepping up, keeping their teams in the rallies. It's who can withstand the rally the longest at this point. CC McGraw, first team, all Big Ten. 
Whistle against Cole, Point, Minnesota. Double hit on Cole, tough set. She's moving forward, trying to send it all the way back to the pin. 5-1 run for Minnesota, and they needed it. The Blue Jays faithful trying to take over the path. They're having a good time dancing now. They'll like that response. What a great little touch at the net, far side, the tip over from Ballinger. Ballinger's playing in the middle position, but she's a little bit unorthodox. Goes off of two feet behind the setter quite a bit. 16 ties, six lead changes. There was no doubt from Beth Karpiak that this was going at least four sets. Minnesota hoping it's going to go five. Samity denied by Davis. Rollins with the crank and the point as Minnesota starting to find their groove. Like Co Coach Mitch, Huck Mitch Huck Hutchins said, no style points. Just need to take nice, solid swings. There's Adana with a nice cross-her-body line shot. 14 kills Friday, 11 kills for Coach McCutcheon. Saturday, back row dig, not there. Point Creighton and Davis. Talk about stat stuffers. Yeah, Stephanie Samity got off to a great start, but Davis has been the star of stars. Hitting so high tonight. Again, against Iowa State, we saw her taking advantage of a lot of seams. Thought she might struggle against a bigger Minnesota block, but the tempo that they're running her at, Minnesota still showing some holes in that block, and she's taking advantage. Never a good time for a service error, but after that fantastic point to give it right back, Minnesota will take it, and they'll take that two-point lead back to the service line with Rollins, 9-7. Davis. Cleaned up by Miller. The net play of both teams has been good. Hart, not a whole lot of power. There's power, and but it's out of bounds. Hickman. Hickman's working, uh, working hard to get up in, in transition. Too much cross-body action there. This is where the PAV will get going. They'll get behind this great Minnesota team. Cleaned up by Hart. Remember that effort? And Hart can't set her feet, though. Not the best set there for Hart. Couldn't really get any power behind it. Not a great set, but also kind of a timid attack there. Not going after it aggressively. You're seeing that right, folks. Creighton leading two to one after dropping the first set. They won set two and three. They're down two here, now down just one. I like the emotion and fire from number 18 for Creighton, Madeline Cole, the senior transfer from Marshall. Going right after CC McGraw, the first team all Big Ten libero, bringing so much velocity behind that serve, catches her high. So Cole going to try to tie it, and Clayton was pumped up. Some theatrics from the bench there. McKenna Krause, the freshman from Greenville, Wisconsin, flying high here in the pad. Minnesota, though, serving with a two-point lead, hoping to tie things up. Reagan Pittman. Hart. That is fun to watch, right? Setting her feet, big old swing, and the kill. Textbook. Works hard to get off the net, takes a full approach. A very nice closed big block in front of her. And she takes the sharp angle. Twelve nine. Service air for Pittman. That's six service airs for the Golden Gophers. Creighton has seven. Remember, Minnesota had four service aces in that first set. They've only had one service ace since. Davis, 15 kills, 15 digs. Red shirt freshman. 
Into the net is Hart. Point. Blue Jays. Starts with a great serve from Davis, keeping this Minnesota offense out of system. Hart, typically very talented at taking a swing with a set that's behind her. There it drops in front. Davis also has a couple blocks. Samity, not a whole lot of power. Samity with a dig, but an overpass and hammered home by Hickman. Minnesota just can't seem to get their offense going, not getting into a rhythm that they're used to being in. And this Creighton team is just scrappy, sticking in there. And when you give them enough chances, they're going to get points. Well, that shot said it all, didn't it? Volleyball Hall of Famer, first man from New Zealand to be in the Volleyball Hall of Fame, Hugh McCutcheon. Concerned here, 12-12. Kept alive, another dig by Witt. Answered though at the net. Once again, coming off the bench, I.D. Miyabe. Miyabe bringing that spark. We'll see if she can sustain that spark, maybe build a little bit of fire for this Minnesota offense. She'll go back to the bench. Massive point. And a big smile to show for it. Minnesota up one. Two kills, two blocks for Miyabe. Sending it over there with Zimmerman. There's Samity. Dug out again by Witt. Point. Blue Jays. Tied at 13. Back to serve, Brittany Witt. 18 digs, 18 digs for Witt. Miller back over to Hart, 19 digs for Witt. Cole back pass. Hart, another dig for Witt. Tooling it is Zimmerman. The Blue Jays ready for this moment indeed. Witt is giving her team so many chances. And then Zimmerman taking a big swing. I like how much this team trusts each other. And I see that trust in the swings that they're taking. You got a big block in front of you, take a rip, see what happens. Miller pops it to Hart, and Hart goes too deep. Creighton, 10 points away from shocking the Minnesota Golden Gophers and moving on to the Sweet 16. The Blue Jays mean business here in Minnesota, up two sets to one. Creighton leading two sets to one over Minnesota as we break down the match summary. The Blue Jays with three players with double-doubles. One of those Jayla Zimmerman doing a great job on the outside. When we talked to Coach Booth earlier, she said that as a freshman, Jayla would show her emotions on the court that when she wasn't doing so well, you could see it. Now she permeates confidence. She's one of the most mentally strong players on this team. That confidence has turned into 11 kills and 10 digs to go with Davis 15 kills and 16 digs. Those are fantastic numbers for the sophomore wearing number seven. And the Blue Jays are going to handle another big swing from Hart. Morgan and Samity at the net. McGraw pushed over by Morgan. Blue Jays defense has been phenomenal. Did they find the point? They did. Minnesota. A break right there, an attack air from Creighton. Couldn't quite get it inside the line. Definitely a break, Dean. Alexis Hart is out there on the outside, high flying, really swinging tough. Aggressive swings over the block, and Creighton's defense is lining up and digging her. Cole Zimmerman, 12 kills. How many times has Zimmerman tooled the block as well? From the pass here, moving Zimmerman around, typically hitting out of the outside. I like this little 
inside tempo ball, mixes it up for Minnesota's block to try to catch up with. She does permeate confidence. Morgan down the middle. They need to make, perhaps go back to the middle, relying too much on the pins. Morgan there now with three kills. I like that strategy, Dean. Get Taylor Morgan, get Reagan Pittman involved. Open it up for Alexis Hart. Adonna Rollins to start putting some balls down. 16-15, Cole eyes behind her head. She's got the dump. She knows what she has on the pin she's looking at, but her back pass has been on point. And Megan Ballinger, she's played just about every position except libero in, in her volleyball career, and she's a middle, set in the middle right now in the M1 spot, but unorthodox, hits a lot off of two feet behind the setter. Answer from Rollins, 12 kills, just one behind Hart. Hart with 13 kills, 17-16. We keep talking about the power of this moment for the Blue Jays. You want to close it when you can close it, right? But it's not that easy. It's not. This is a skilled Minnesota team. They're having trouble getting their offense going, but they have all the tools. So when it starts to click, they're right back in it. Pittman. Pittman there with the block. Miyabe again stepping in to help out Minnesota on the right side. Reagan Pittman does a great job of getting hip to hip with Miyabe closing down that block. Three blocks for Pittman, three blocks for Miyabe. Wow. Power swing, hustle from Miyabe, not enough. But the Blue Jays take the lead 18 to 17 here in the fourth set. Nice back row attack. Zimmerman playing six rotations so that she can be an offensive threat from wherever she is. Creighton three and five this season after losing the first set. 18 to 17 here in the fourth. Nobody, nobody gonna stop that power there from Rollins. Minnesota really trying to switch things up. They have Bailey McMenamin in, in the setting position out of the back row. Trying to get a bigger block perhaps up against this Creighton Blue Jay team. So Rollins back to the service line. She does have one service ace. Tied at 18 in the all important fourth set for Minnesota to try to push it to the fifth set. Out of bounds, point, Golden Gophers. No, no. They're gonna say, I think they're gonna say point. Blue Jays, Hugh McCutcheon. Not gonna challenge it, let's see here. The Minnesota team all calling out. Possible touch there. That's a big swing point. They fake Pittman, instead they go Miyabe. Another look at the previous play here. Original call is the ball is out. Minnesota point. But went to the Blue Jays. Give Minnesota credit for shaking that off. Pittman serving 19-19, fourth set. Second round of the NCAA Volleyball Tournament with a shot in the Sweet 16. Nebraska, Penn State, Wisconsin, Purdue already there. And Minnesota with a one point lead here in the fourth set. And the Pavs starting to heat up. I like the feeling in the gym. This Minnesota crowd not going to let their Gophers down. Really bringing some energy. Coming up on BTN, the big show has post-match reaction and analysis next on BTN and the Fox Sports app. Hugh McCutcheon talking it over. Minnesota 20, the Blue Jays 19. Blue Jays taking set two and three to take a 2-1 lead. Earlier it was all Blue Jays dancing, but now the Golden Gophers starting to dance again, Beth. 
this Minnesota team is experienced. They're a Big Ten team. They fight every night in the Big Ten. So they know how to come back. They have all the tools to beat this Creighton team. They just need to start putting everything together. 2019 NCAA Tournament. The Florida Gators already in the regional semifinal as they sweep UCF. Donna Rollins for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 14 kills on Friday. Another big performance tonight. Minnesota only hitting 139 as a team, but Adonna Rollins, a shining star, hitting 344, 13 kills, two errors on 32 attempts. Staying very steady for this Minnesota team that's struggling offensively altogether. 14 Friday night, 13 tonight. With more volleyball in front of her. As Minnesota hoping for that all-important fifth set to decide who will face Florida in the Sweet 16. He's just a dig away from a double-double. Cole for Davis, and Davis tools it. 20-20. Minnesota intentionally serving in that location so that the ball would be forced out to Davis. The block is there, and she still finds a way through. It's the 10th time we've been tied here in this fourth set. Dug out by Witt. How does she do it? Minnesota will get the point. Witt with the dig, but whistle against Creighton Point, Minnesota. A double hit called, so Minnesota Point. But take a look, Alexis Hart high flying and Witt just lining up against her all night. Doing a great job. And then the double hit there by Cole. I don't know if I saw it there, Dean. What I did see is Brittany Witt put on a clinic <laughs> with her digging abilities, right? That's for sure. McGraw, pretty good digger as well. McGraw, back row, handled there by the Blue Jays. And the Blue Jays tie it again. A nice dig, CeCe McGraw. And so impressed by Hickman's blocking discipline all night. She does a great job of keeping her hands high so that when she's ready, it's just a quick move over the net. Oh my. I like the reaction from Creighton's bench. That's one of those ones that Taylor Morgan, she gets up, hammer straight down. You say, nice hit. Roll it under the net and we'll get the next one. Taylor Morgan bringing the heat. We were calling for more middle action because it is working for Minnesota. 22-21, fourth set. Speaking of middle action, the Blue Jays with the response. They are fearless. Ballinger, the senior from Iowa. Right back at you, Ballinger, the emotional leader on this team. I like the crossbody shot. She's going in, facing one way, and then swings it back. An instant classic in Minneapolis. Blue Jays and the Golden Gophers for a spot in the Sweet 16 and yet another tool for Zimmerman. Zimmerman so good at the net, identifying what's in front of her and point production for number seven, Jayla Zimmerman. You're exactly right, Dean. She's doing a great job of seeing the block and also taking aggressive swings. Some hitters have the tendency when going up against a big block like Minnesota, one that you might not be used to seeing in regular conference play, and being more timid. Not Jayla Zimmerman. She's swinging away, and her defense is there to back her right up. What a show from the Blue Jays here coming into Minnesota, showing no fear led by their 17-year head coach, Kirsten Bernthal Booth. As we mentioned, Smiley Bob Warming went to 11 NCAAs during his time at Creighton. When I asked him about Kirsten Bernthal Booth, he said, and I quote, she is such an amazing woman, like literally one of the most complete female or male coaches I have ever met. Quite the compliment. You're seeing it. She set the tone as well, and you also see the Blue Jays' ability to come back. Two wins against ranked teams, USC and Marquette. Meanwhile, a 
as the Blue Jays know that they're two points away from advancing to the Sweet 16. Keep in mind, Creighton knows what this is like. Just a few years ago, they went to the Elite Eight, so they're no stranger to success at this moment. The, the seniors on this team were freshmen during that Elite Eight run, so they know what it feels like. Feel the pressure here at the pad. Minnesota, every touch important, every swing. And the Blue Jays one point away from knocking off the Golden Gophers. And now if I'm the Blue Jays, my strategy here is serve tough, get a block, don't let the ball come over the net. Timeout, Minnesota. Madeline Cole, Megan Ballinger. Another look. Great serve, gets Minnesota out of system. Stephanie Samity has to step in and take the second ball. The Blue Jays are there, Ballinger and Cole with a big block. So Cole, four kills, 12 digs, 38 helpers. Ballinger, six kills, three blocks, nine blocks for the Blue Jays and are dancing Blue Jays a little nervous here one point away from a shot at Florida in the Sweet 16. Right the fans not so loose anymore but hopefully this Creighton team wants to come out and play just as loose as they've been all night in that underdog role that they like so much. But Minnesota fully capable of coming back into this match. The Blue Jays seeking their first Sweet 16 for the first time since 2016. Nerves everywhere. What a job, though, by head coach Kirsten Bernthal Booth really setting the tone and her team to relax on the road. And serving for the victory, the Blue Jays. Samity denied, kept alive there by McGraw. Samity again dug out. Of course, it's Brittany Witt. Denied at the net. The Blue Jays stay with it. Witt with the dig. Point Minnesota. As big a point as you could have right there for the Golden Gophers. And this crowd still in it for Minnesota. Nice swing from Zimmerman like we've been seeing all night, but the block fully formed there, pushing over strong. And Minnesota has to push for extra volleyball here in the fourth set. They must win this point or the Blue Jays advance. C.C. McGraw, first team all Big Ten at the service line for the Golden Gophers. Cole behind and out of bounds. We're tied at 24. The Gophers survive. Blue Jays had an opportunity here. Megan Ballinger, she's had some success on that right side pin, going aggressive after the line, but CC McGraw, foots on the line, she knows that ball's out. 13 ties in this fourth set, and a service ace, and Minnesota doing the Minnesota thing at the pad. Take a look at the movement on this float serve from CC. Catches wit high. The Blue Jays had two match points. They give it away, and now Minnesota can tie things up. Some nerves that we haven't seen from the Blue Jays, I think, previously uh, to these last couple points, and Minnesota really kicking it in. Remember, never has Creighton knocked off Minnesota. In fact, the last time they even won a set was back in 2012. Well, they won two today, and they were so close to wrapping this thing up, but 
Well, you can tell by the body language, of course, the crowd getting into it, but that shot a moment ago of the Creighton bench, a little bit of shock. Not as loose as we've seen them all night. Minnesota hitting 125, the Blue Jays 142. Digs 72 for the Blue Jays, 64 for the Golden Gophers, blocks even at nine. Davis, 17 kills, 17 digs. Rollins, 13 kills, nine digs. Witt, the dig machine with 24 digs. Minnesota serving to push it to five sets. CC McGraw. Cole, a little touch, dug out by Samity. Remember that play. Blue Jays set up their offense. Denied by Samity and Pittman. And the block, the emotion from Stephanie Samity. Two sets apiece, the comeback complete for Minnesota. A 4-0 run to end the set. Time to strap in, we got a fifth set to see who will face Florida in the Sweet 16. Creighton had two match points denied as you break down the stats, Beth Carpia. We've highlighted here a pretty low offensive production from both teams, 133-124, compared to Minnesota coming into this match, hitting 269 on average for the season. So usually really clicking offensively, struggling tonight, and digs. That's a big story tonight. Reminding you what they're playing for, a spot in the Sweet 16 and a matchup against the number 10 seed, Florida Gators. Minnesota taking set one, relatively easy fashion as Stephanie Samity was just having a stat stuffer type of day, but then the freshman of the year in the Big East, Keely Davis with the answer in two and three. Minnesota looked like they were done. The Blue Jays were dancing, but Minnesota keeps the party going. Fifth and final set, Minnesota, the Creighton Blue Jays, fingernail biting time indeed. Kayla looking a little, I'm sorry, Jayla looking a little nervous there, but then big smile coming through. Twenty-five, thirteen, Minnesota set one. Blue Jays respond, 25-19, 25-15, set two and three. The Blue Jays with two match points. They were up 24-22, Minnesota. A 4-0 run to win set four, 26-24, which brings us to the fifth final set. And it's so important to come out quickly in the fifth set, Dean. First team to eight has a big advantage. Brittany Witt, conversation with her coach, Hugh McCutcheon, conversation with the officials. Looks like they're sorting out the lineups. So he does not normally take this long. Dean Linky with Beth Karpiak. Not surprised at all, are you, Beth, that Creighton able to take Minnesota to five sets. They're not as physical as Minnesota. They're not as big as Minnesota. They haven't played a, as great a conference schedule as Minnesota has, but they have talent, and they really can fight. Speaking of fight, you got to give Minnesota all kinds of credit for the grit, the tenacity to come back and win that fourth set. Transfer from UCLA. So many great sets from Samantha Seliger-Swenson. 
Hugh McCutcheon looking for someone to replace her. Kylie Miller comes in from Bruin Land. And here we go, first set underway. So glad you're with us on the Big Ten Network. So Minnesota got a free point. As the Blue Jays submitted their lineup incorrectly, so the Golden Gophers get a free point. How about that? And then a challenge. Wow. Time to regroup for this Creighton Blue Jays team, not the way that they wanted to start giving away a free point to Minnesota. So off the free point, the Blue Jays are saying that that was touched by Samity. Looking for a touch here on the block. I think it I does like look like Morgan's fingers. Is that Morgan? Good call. Get pushed back. Nice angle there from our BTN crew. Another look here. Kirsten Bernthal Booth. Remember, Minnesota took a little while to get this fifth set underway as the way we understand it, the Blue Jays submitted their lineup incorrectly, so the Golden Gophers get the point. Blue Jays still staying loose. Tough break, though, to give one away. As you said, first one to eight is key, but when you give one right off the start right there with the lineup wrong, it takes a lot of mental, mental toughness. You have to just forget about it. Nothing you can do. Good call. You said it hit Morgan's fingers and a good challenge. And perhaps all is good in the world after that challenge. Great job by Coach Bernthal Booth for staying with it after giving up that controversial point. So we tied at one. It's the first of 14. Great dig again by Witt. How many times have we said that in her career? Two swings for Minnesota handled by the Blue Jays. Zimmerman. As it stuffed back, Minnesota with a 2-1 lead. Stephanie Samity with four kills in the first set. Zero kills since then. But that last play picking up on Zimmerman. They've got her number now closing down the block. Samity does have four blocks. Morgan with a block there. Miller goes back to Samity and... Four kills no longer make it five. It's perfect time and about time for Stephanie Samity. There it is. Gets off the net, comes in, quick little approach, finds the line. 3-1 Minnesota. Good swing. CC McGraw with that first contact. What a dig by Witt. The Blue Jays go deep. McGraw. Brittany Witt with the amazing dig. And the Blue Jays get the point. I don't know what more we can say about Brittany Witt keeping her team in this match, really lining up so well against those Minnesota outsides who can really bring the power. You said the word lining up. She makes her body so big and ready. and has got both hands ready. And then coming off of that, a service ace. Brittany Witt, the complete package, the all-time digs leader in the history of Blue Jays volleyball. 26 digs on the day. Ah! 
Big swing denied by the Blue Jays, and the Blue Jays have a 4-3 lead. Another great serve gets Minnesota out of system. So the Blue Jays know they're going outside to Adana Rollins, a block really well formed set up. And when the block is formed, it makes it so much easier for defense to read around it. So credit to Brittany Witt's block as well. Minnesota comes right back and we're tied at four. First one to 15, win by two. Stephanie Samity getting into a rhythm now. She's only got one blocker. Ballinger's late to close and she takes advantage. Two kills, one block this set for Stephanie Samity. Service air for Minnesota. But seven service airs and kill Kelly. The specialist, so hard and emotional coming off that bench, serving and giving an easy point back. One of the hardest jobs in college volleyball, that's for sure. There's contact, McGraw looked like it was going out. Doesn't matter, doesn't matter. Cleaned up by Rollins. Rollins 14th kill on the night. Nice angle here, sky ball out of system. And she reacts all business, ready to go on to the next one. All business, double, double, 14 kills, 10 digs for number 20. 14 kills last night, 14 kills tonight, but 10 digs to go with it. Samity serving. 5-5, five, five. Cole Zimmerman denied. Pittman was there. And tooling it. Point Blue Jays. Great work by Ballinger, the senior. Minnesota's really keyed in on Zimmerman there on the outside. They've shut her down the past few swings. Ballinger there to bail her out from the right side pin. Stephanie Samity. Super effective fifth set. We'll go to the bench. The Blue Jays serving up one here in the fifth set. Rollins kept alive by Cole. Flying high, Davis, and stuffed by Pittman. Minnesota takes out their setter, Kylie Miller, and brings in Mayabe, Bailey McMiniman in in the back row setting so that Mayabe can be up there putting up a big block. 6-6. Six, six. Overpass. Pittman denied, though. Remember that, Hart. The Blue Jays, the dump. Cole started that first set. Remember that overpass, though. The Blue Jays were ready for it. Great, great athletic play from Cole. Turning to block Reagan Pittman on the overpass and then putting the ball down for the win, or for the kill. Madeline Cole, answer, Minnesota. They have needed everybody, including I.D. Miyabe. We've been tied at one, three, four, five, six, and seven here in this fifth set. Six ties, two lead changes. Pittman serving, tied at seven. Fifth set. Davis out of bounds, and the Golden Gophers leading the fifth set, 8-7. What a matchup. The Blue Jays, Rollins with the answer. Minnesota leading the fifth set by one. Minnesota leading the fifth set eight to seven to decide who will make it to the Sweet 16 to face Florida. You see Louisville and Texas have also advanced to the Sweet 16. Dean Linky with Beth Karpiak. So much on the line. It's been an even battle. And a lot of credit to this Minnesota team. I'm, I'm going to put it out there. They're not playing how they want to play. They're not playing their best volleyball, but finding other ways to get it done. So used to being strong offensively, and when your offense isn't clicking, what can you do? They're taking advantage of subs. They're serving strong. And Stephanie Samity trying to fight her way back into this match after struggling midway through. Pittman with the serve. Davis. How many times has Davis been able to tool the Minnesota block? Davis, 18 kills. 
Another look at Davis swinging here out of system. What great placement from the senior Madeline Cole, giving Davis an opportunity to take a big swing. Davis had 31 kills in that five match victory over Marquette. She's got 18 kills to lead all players and we're tied at eight. Kept alive. Dug out by Zimmerman. Davis denied by Minnesota. As Minnesota using their bench effectively, Miyabe there again. Miyabe doing a nice job of setting this block. You see, once her feet get there, she goes straight up and pushes back into the court. That gives Taylor Morgan a nice post to jump up to, jump next to. Minnesota nine, Creighton eight. Down the middle, denied by Morgan. Cole back pass, ready for it. Was Hart too deep? And Minnesota with a two-point lead, five away from moving on to the Sweet 16. Timeout called by the Blue Jays. Kirsten Bernthal Booth, what will be her message here at the pad? I think she's got to tell them that they have to stay loose. You can't get hesitant and start playing different volleyball when it's tight like this, when you're in big situations. They've been successful tonight because they're swinging away, because they trust each other, and they need to keep doing that in situations, even when they're down. So you wonder about nerves. You see the Blue Jays, 24-0, went out hitting their opponent. Don't forget the reason Minnesota is still in this, the end of that fourth set. The Blue Jays had two opportunities for match point. Minnesota really stuck in it. Starting to key in on Zimmerman there on the outside. Tough serving and again on Zimmerman. Big block right in front of her putting it down. So Hugh McCutcheon's team with the great crowd here at the PAV have kept it together. Now, we started to wonder about the pressure on this Blue Jays team. They were loose. However, they have five hitting errors this set. Minnesota just won. That is the difference right now. And I think it's not only some nerves coming in for Creighton, but Minnesota also picking up their play, changing around their blocking system to better attack this Minnesota, uh, I'm sorry, this Creighton offense. Ten eight. Cole Davis denied again. Great timing on Davis. And Minnesota with the block. Two in a row here. Shutting down Davis, Taylor Morgan doing a great job of closing the block and also Stephanie Samity really being an active blocker, attacking the block, going after the ball. Morgan's got nine blocks, Samity's got five from the back row. Point Blue Jays, Jayla Zimmerman. Row Davis through the tape. Little hesitation, miscommunication there from Minnesota. Can the Blue Jays and Zimmerman take advantage? Dug out, back row. Good job by Rollins. Now Hart through the block. From the dig here, Adana Rollins keeping it in play. Hart so good at taking the ball from behind her body, still seeing the block and bringing so much power. You know as well as anybody, hitting that angle is so difficult. The timing is, is such a challenge, and she is truly a master of it. 
The train is rolling at the PAV. Minnesota now two points away from moving on. We said it earlier, we'll say it again. The Big Ten is tough in the NCAA tournament. Six teams in the Sweet 16 the last three years. Two in the Final Four to match those last three years. Trying to make it five in the Sweet 16 for the 2019 tournament. Penn State, Wisconsin, Purdue, Nebraska, all in the Sweet 16. Minnesota. A block party here late against the Blue Jays. 14 blocks for Minnesota. When your offense isn't clicking how you want, how can you make up for it? You get some blocks. Taylor Morgan doing a nice job of closing all the way to Miyabi, all the way to Stephanie Samity. Pushing over and building some momentum. Miles says it all. Taylor Morgan, four kills, nine blocks. Meanwhile, the emotion of the Blue Jays, they were right there. Two match points in that fourth set, denied a 4-0 run to finish the fourth set. The difference, and now Minnesota on a 5-1 run. This one was tied at eight in the fifth set. The Golden Gophers two points away from moving on. Zimmerman, phenomenal work by Miller. Rollins, back row, Cole pops it in the air to Zimmerman, who cranks it. And Zimmerman now with 17 kills. Minnesota's block picking up on Zimmerman earlier. Now she's finding high hands and gets a kill. 13 10. Wit with the serve. Wow, what a pass. <laughs> Number one finger in the air, match point, Minnesota. The Golden Gophers, another trip to the Sweet 16. Fifth straight season, the Golden Gophers make it to the Sweet 16. It wasn't easy. Sometimes it wasn't pretty, but Minnesota moving on. So much credit to this Minnesota team for fighting. Only hitting 141 on the match. Again, coming into this match on the season, hitting 269. So it wasn't clicking, but they found a way. They stuck in it and really keyed in on those Creighton attackers and pulled out the win. Let's take one more look at the final point for Minnesota. Megan Pittman, so much discipline. Following her hitters, waiting, pushing over strong. Love finishing the match on a block. Time to update the bracket. Florida now knows they will face the Minnesota Golden Gophers in the Sweet 16. The winner of that game will face the winner of Louisville and Texas. As we said earlier, it wasn't easy. Sometimes it wasn't pretty, but it was gritty. Hugh McCutcheon, you get the victory and you're moving on. How's it feel? Now, it feels great, obviously. I mean, uh, Creighton's a heck of a team. Uh, they played a great match and uh, just really proud of our athletes for finding a way. You know, I mean, it wasn't easy at all for us out there. We weren't really grooving. Um, and it's, 
a testament to them that we're able to find a way to win, even though we're not firing on all cylinders, you know? Coach, talk about defense in that match from the blocking perspective and also court defense from CeCe oh, yeah. McGraw. Yeah, CeCe was great. Obviously, really scrappy back there. But I just thought the blocking was the thing that kept us in it. Um, you know, we really struggled to to try to shut him down for a couple of games there, but we just talked about being disciplined and being square and over and just trying to keep our defense a little tighter, and, and um, that seemed to pay off for us. But, yeah, the block really kept us in it towards the end there. And, Hugh, it didn't hurt to have the PAV, the faithful there. They were electric oh, behind your team. Unbelievable, right? I mean, it's so cool that we get to do this. Uh, there are so few places in the world where, where volleyball is enjoyed and matters as much as it does here. And uh, fans were great. We're, we're grateful for them and uh, excited to move on. Another visit to the Sweet 16. Good luck, Coach. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. We'll take all the help we can get. Cheers. <laughs> you McCutcheon, the Sweet 16 machine, Taylor Morgan getting it done. Taylor does a great job elevating in the front row. She's so high, so she can hit so many angles. And then towards the end of the match, really picking up her blocking. And she's going to join us now. Taylor Morgan, you guys hung in there. As we said earlier, it wasn't the most beautiful piece of art, but at the end of the day, you get the victory. Talk about the collective effort of the Golden Gophers. We work really well together, and we just put our hearts on the court. And I couldn't ask to be on a better team. And I just love the girls so much. We really showed resilience and grit, and we were all in it for everybody. Taylor, what does it mean to you to be going to the Sweet 16 in your redshirt senior season? Uh, it means the world to me because we work so hard each year, and sometimes, some years, we didn't make it. And just seeing the look in the team's yeah. eyes that we gave it our all and it wasn't quite there. Um, so it means the world that we're really putting forth a good foot and good effort. And I'm just, like I said before, I'm really proud of the team. And I. This is the best feeling ever. I'm trying not to cry, but we're going to hold together. <laughs> now you're holding together just fine, and it helps to have the reaction of your teammates and the great fans at the PAV and your great reactions as well. Yeah, it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> great emotion. Good luck in the Sweet 16. Thanks so much for being with us. Thank you so much. <laughs> Those shots say it all right there. She brings so much emotion, so much fire. And once again, Big Ten delivering the heat in the NCAA tournament. What do you think? How many teams can make it to the Elite Eight or the Final Four from the Big Ten? I like the teams that have made it so far in the Big Ten. Wisconsin is hot. Nebraska pulling out a big win tonight. And this Minnesota team showing that they can really fight. Penn State and Purdue also might have something to say. Minnesota and Florida. The winner of that match will face the winner of Louisville and Texas. For sure, hats off. Great work from the Creighton Blue Jays. Formidable, representing the Big East with style, but it's the Big Ten Minnesota Golden Gophers that get the win. That's going to wrap it up from Minneapolis, where the Golden Gophers knock off the Blue Jays by a final score of 3-2. to two. Coming up next, it's the big show on the Big Ten Network. So for Michigan middle blocker, my superstar Beth Karpiak, and our entire crew, I'm Dean Linky. Saying so long as Minnesota advances to the Sweet 16, we send it to our Chicago studios for the big show.